All right, let's look at a couple properties. So we may remember that f of f inverse is x, and f inverse of f of x is x. Basically, they cancel each other out as long as we're in the domain. So that creates a couple issues with inverse trig. Um, so in the domain is the key piece of information. Um, so let's check this out. So sine inverse of sine of pi over 3 is pi over 3. Basically, they cancel each other out. Um, but this is only true because pi over 3 is in that restricted domain. Or the range of sine inverse. Um, but sine inverse of sine of 2 pi over 3 is not 2 pi over 3. We'll figure out how to do this in a second. But this is not in the range of sine inverse. Um, from a couple videos ago, right, the range was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So what we'd have to do is figure out which angle is actually in that range. So let's do that. So sine of 2 pi over 3 would be over here. Here's 2 pi over 3. The sine will be the y value, but the range is only on the right side. So what angle gives me the same value but is in the range? And that would be pi over 3. So in a weird way, sine inverse of sine of 2 pi over 3 is not 2 pi over 3, but it's pi over 3. Um, and that's because sine of 2 pi over 3 equals sine of pi over 3, right? They have the same output, they have the same y value, but pi over 3 is in the range of sine inverse. So I would maybe highlight all of these. I just kind of summarize the domains again. So arc sine of sine x or sine inverse of sine of x equals x, assuming we're in that restricted domain. So if we're not in the restricted domain, we'll do something like that. And so just highlight all these restricted domains. Um, um, if we're solving for sine instead, right, it's between negative 1 and 1. So we're basically looking at the, um, we're looking at the domain of the inner function or the range of the outer function, right? Because we're outputting that outer function. So that's the range of the outer function. All right, let's try a couple more. I think it just makes more sense by doing it. So cosine of inverse of cosine of pi over 8. Pi over 8 would be right here, right? That is in the range, so it's just pi over 8. Right? That's in between 0 and pi. Sine, inver sine of sine inverse of 1 fifth, um, that's in the range, so it's in between negative 1 and 1, so yeah, they cancel out, it's just 1 fifth. And then our final one is 5 pi over 4, um, this one has an issue, so we have pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 would be down here. The range for cosine inverse is only 0 to pi. So we're going to find the angle in the top half that would have the same value. So I think my cosine value is negative root 2 over 2 for 5 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 has that same value. So if you draw the unit circle for these, it's not too bad. So you're just finding the, same, the angle with the same value but is in the given range. Hopefully this helps. If you draw the picture, it's very doable. If you try to do it without the picture, um, it can get a little scary. All right, let's do the final example. Um, the 2 is going to make this one a little tricky. So these don't cancel out. The 2 kind of prevents us from doing that. This is basically like saying f of 2g of x. So we have to deal with that 2. So let's draw the triangle. Anytime I have these inverse functions, I like to draw the triangle. 
So we have sine inverse is four fifths. So theta opposite is four, hypotenuse is five. Um, if anyone remembers special triangles, you might remember this is three, four, five, but you could do a squared plus four squared is five squared, and you should get a equals three. That's a special triangle. The problem is, is we don't know how to, f this is theta, uh, but we actually are looking for two theta. That's what the two does. So the um, sine inverse of four fifths finds theta, but we need to um, double it. We can't just find sine and double the answer. So this isn't two times four fifths. We have to use an identity. And this trick actually shows up in calculus a lot. So this is a good example to maybe put a star next to. So if you go back to a couple sections ago, we learned that two sine, sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. This is an identity, a fact. And now we can find sine of theta and cosine of theta. Um, our triangle did not represent two theta. You can't just double it. Um, we have to use an identity to get theta, and then we can plug in. So sine of theta will be opposite over hypotenuse, so four fifths, which is why sine inverse of four fifths was that way. And then cosine will be adjacent over hypotenuse, three fifths. And then we'll just simplify, and that is the value of this weird function. Um, so what do we get? 2 times 4 times 3, 24 over 25. So just be super, super cautious when there's coefficients. Um, they seem like minor details, but they make a big difference. All right, and that's it for 4.8.